Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Eater of Worlds Raid Guide. The first thing you'll want to do when you load up is just kind of make your way over to this area. It's a pretty straightforward path. You're going to eventually get to these plates, and you're going to want to have one person on each plate and just follow the leader. So as you can see, I'm following the person in front of me just one at a time. So just line up when you get to the area and then go in that same order that you lined up in. Should be straightforward, just keep following the leader for this one. I'll just kind of let all of these play out just so you can see the exact pathing path that we all take. Once they turn red, then, and you see the reactor temperature rises in the bottom left corner, that means it's locked and you can just get to the next area and be good. It has to lock, otherwise if you just get to the next area without it locking, it will not actually work and you will have to go back and do it. So this next one is going to be the same thing, follow the leader, but you're going to have two sides this time. So we'll start on the right side. You want to have somebody jump down there, then another one will pop up on left. So have another leader jump down there. Then you will go in right and left and kind of switch in between them. So just follow the leader with them. Eventually you'll get to the like next, like where they interlap, but as long as you have one person jump there, it doesn't matter which side. And then jump to the second one, and that one's locked. For the next one, it's going to be again, follow the leader. Except for this time, the person in the fourth position, which is the person in front of me right now, they're going to split off once they get to there. So they're splitting off to the left side now. Then once you get all of three of your left side people on the left, so right here, then the left side is going to stop and the right side team will continue forward. Once they touch, then it's going to lock and you can go and get to the next plate. This last one is the most complicated one, but hopefully with this strategy it will help you guys a little bit more. So this part where they're jumping over, then you're just going to want to have player 2 jump to the middle one, and then continue follow the leader. The only thing you're going to have to remember for this one is the last player is going to have to stand in the middle and not go forward to the right one where I'm jumping right now. Last player will stay into the middle so that their play doesn't fall. But other than that, just keep following the leader. Make sure that you're looking at where your uh, person in front of you is going, because right here is where some people get confused. Go off to the right instead of straight in front of you. So just keep looking at the person in front of you, and you should be good. And then once you get them locked, you can go on to the next encounter. So this next encounter doesn't really need a lot of explaining. All it is is clearing out a bunch of ads for about a minute and 30 seconds. Then you'll know the encounter is done once these big guys spawn. Just clear them out and then encounter is done. So after you're completing the encounter, you can go ahead and grab your loot, then you can jump down the big hole. I usually just jump over straight to it, but you can also just kind of stay in the lift and we'll push you back up. Or if you lose your jump like I did there, you can just go over to one of those little side ledges and then jump your way up. Then you can follow the path to get to the engine room. In this room, you're going to need to wait for the big engine parts to slam against the wall, creating that big white blast that you just saw. And that will wipe the team, but then you can move forward. And then you need to stand inside these little yellow boxes in order to survive the big blast. It's just every time you see the big blast, you can move forward. Usually when I hear the big like sound saying that it's ready to go, 
Then I make sure to get inside one of those yellow boxes, and then I can proceed forward. And then you can move on to the secret chest. So once everybody gets into the little room right here, it will launch you. And then there's going to be seven rings when you're falling down. You'll need to have everybody jump through all seven of them. It doesn't have to be the same person going through all of them. It can be everybody on the team as long as all seven of them are hit by somebody. Then you should be good. If you fail to get all of them, you can always jump off the map and then go relaunch. Once you get all seven of them, then there's your little secret chest will spawn. Then you can head down these rocks to get to the next encounter. For the next encounter, you're going to have three different areas of the map. There will be the arc side, the solar side, and the void side. Pretty easy to tell which or which. And then you're going to need to charge a bunch of craniums. The easiest way to do this is just to have each plate charge the two craniums that spawn on their left side. And just grab those craniums and put them in the, the uh, same, like these little furnaces right here. And then that will start cooking them. Once they are ready, they will turn into a cranium. And you'll have to take the cranium over to whichever side has the crystals. So you'll have to just kind of listen to your teammates, see where the crystals are, which crystals spawned. And then whichever side needs them, you just take the craniums over and you can destroy the crystals. For getting two crystals with one like I did right there, I use striking hand and you can punch a an add real quick and then you can destroy two of them with one or if you don't have striking hand then you can just take out two of them with or three of them with two craniums as you can see right there I destroyed one and then the other one is halfway destroyed and so you can just go do that and then come and grab a, another one and destroy the half more and then you can destroy another full one with the second one so you'll never need more than two craniums per side. Even if you get three arc on a side, for example, you still only need two craniums, as you can see right there. So if each side has one defender and one runner, then you should get this done fairly easily. The last thing I want to mention is the crystals will spawn in a clockwise order. So make sure to shoot whatever is on the right side first. For the boss encounter, you're going to want to have all three runners go ahead and plant their cranium into the corresponding element for whichever of these uh, kind of orbs sitting on the side of the shields. So go plant all those craniums for one of each. And then the three runners will destroy the or bring the craniums over to the side where the three uh, orbs are. And then all three defenders are going to just go to where those orbs are and then just clear ads and get ready for damage phase. And another thing you can do while just kind of waiting around is if you have anti-barrier rounds, you can shoot Argos, the uh, Argos cannons so that he can't shoot back at you. And if you don't have anti-barrier rounds, then that doesn't really matter. You can just break his cannons after damage phase. But to start damage phase, you'll just break these uh, orbs. So just have everybody have the runners count down when they're going to shoot them. So just and then just shoot them into the middle. This will open up the barrier on that side and give you a 10% damage or 10 times damage buff. So this is where you're going to want to lay all of your damage in. So if you have anarchy and a, a sniper, that's really good have xenophage that's good 1k is all right i guess just anything that's long range that does a good damage he's going to occasionally send these harpies after you just make sure you shoot those otherwise they'll hurt you if, unless you're standing in a well 
And another thing you want to watch out for is his little triangle thing that he shoots at you. If you get stuck in that, then you won't be able to move or shoot. And you'll have to call for your teammates to shoot you out of it before you get sent to the sky and die. After damage phase, then you're just going to kind of wait around for a while until he opens up and starts spawning all these platforms. Then he's going to be charging up his little energy ball thing. You're going to want to destroy two of his white spots. So easiest way to do it is just go back first. He has two things on his back. They're really easy to shoot. And then after his back is destroyed, then the next damage phase, if you need another one, you will destroy like his left arm and his right or left head. And then should be good on that. And then after that, it's just rinse and repeat. I hope this guide has helped you guys out, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.